these pieces of clay are um, called a Texas Longhorn White with Grog and they've been fired at a temperature of about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit so they're very sturdy but they're not glazed they don't have a finish on them uh, and there's and they're very absorbent so if I were to put wax on these now it will essentially waterproof or liquid proof the parts that I am going to be uh, trying to protect before I spray walnut ink on. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my brush and over here I've got some beeswax and I've wiped the brush off and I'm putting a coat of beeswax just on the very top surfaces not letting it go into the cracks. It's a little bit tricky because you want to cover the top but still stay out of the crevices so you keep your brush really flat and turn it and I love the way the beeswax just bonds with the with the unglazed clay there's a, a sort of a silky silky beauty to that combination and it needs to dry completely which doesn't take long because again the clay is so absorbent and if you look at the two you can see a little bit of a difference here this one is as I said a little silkier this one is still a little bit rough but uh, watch especially when we put walnut ink on each of these I'm going to grab the walnut ink and let these guys cool for just a second this is the walnut ink that I use in so many of my workshops it's made by Sukaneko and it's uh, created from walnut shells. It comes in natural colors. This is called eucalyptus and it's a uh, gray green and this one is called terracotta. So if I spray this one, which doesn't have the beeswax on it, you can see that it soaks right into the clay. But if I spray this one, which has been waxed, you can see that the beeswax repels it and I get a really interesting resist, almost like batik, if you've ever worked with batik. So let me wipe this off, and then I'll do the other one. This color uh, of walnut ink is called terracotta. And when you wipe it off, you can see that, you know, it almost looks like an ancient relic, like it's been aged. The wax here is protecting the hands, which are sticking up. But here in the in the depressions and the incised areas, it's not protected. Whereas this one, if I take it and wipe it off, and normally I'd use a little water for this, you can say that see that it stays in the surface depressions. So this is beeswax and this is unwaxed, and both of them have their uses. I am still exploring wax on clay. What I would do after this probably is to get a needle tool and go back in and start making some scratches and doing some distress marks like these, especially on the hand here where there's a lot of wax. Do some mark making here, especially where the where the wax and the clay meet. And now I'm going to spray another layer of walnut ink on this and blot it off and let's see how much of the of the scratches it picks up. Oh yeah, you can see that the scratches are really kind of cool. So there's some neat mark making there that looks kind of like scrimshaw or ivory. So you can play back and forth with wax and un glazed clay and get kind of a, um, a unique effect. I keep going back to the idea of ivory and scrimshaw, but with white clay it has a, a really interesting, unique effect. We're going to do the same sort of beeswax surface treatment on this tile which happens to be just one of those terracotta tiles, like a saltillo tile, that's used on floors. And it's very uh, low fire, 
These are traditionally Spanish flooring tiles. And they come in all kinds of shapes, but you'll see that I did a photo transfer on this. And I did this transfer with um, printer paper, just regular old printer paper, lightweight printer paper, and then rubbed it so that it has kind of a an antique look as if it's been outside for a while and uh, this woman's face is coming through but I'm going to put a coat of beeswax on it and see what it does for both the protection of the image and also the density of the image so just as if I were watching washing on a board I'm going to drag this across this tile is really cold. It's a chilly day out here. So you'll see a couple of things are happening. The wax is going on, but it is not bonding really well because the tile was so cold. And while I'm only putting one layer on this and not fusing it, what I think I'll do is to give it a little heat with a hair dryer. And again, this is not fusing as you would in a traditional way, but it's just sort of making sure that the wax gets um, adhered nicely to the Saltillo tile. And I am going to let that cool off for a few minutes. See how warm it is. Yeah, it's warmed up quite a bit. But again, if you wanted to, you could come in here and do some scraping and some mark making to sort of distress it if you wanted to. Let's see how that's going to take the walnut ink. Oh, that's nice. I don't know if you can see. I'll hold this up again in a minute, but it's getting some good textures on it that sort of add a layer of of age to it. Can you see that? Right in there. Looks really cool. And you could add more if you wanted to. You could probably even take some book foil. Since this is now a wax coated surface, you could probably take some book foil and do some gold marks on here, and we all know how much we love gold marks. So I would take this handy masking tape here. And remember, you always put your, your book foil, your transfer foil, with the gold side up. Hard to remember. And let's peel it off. And that looks really nice. It gives it a little bit of a bling effect. If you wanted you to, you could add some more of that. But just experiment around with uh, clay and beeswax. It's sort of fun. And uh, you can also use colored beeswax on here if you want. But I just really like the idea of plain beeswax and natural clay. So just playing in the studio today.